So over a year ago, I posted a video saying I would drive this. And I know what you're thinking. We don't care. It's been a year. You haven't done anything. And although that is true, it's not entirely my fault. You see, in that time period, I've built a new shop. As you can see, I've started new projects, built a motorcycle, all waiting for one thing. And that is this. This transmission I had built specifically for the Renault project. It has three inch shorter axles, which at the time, apparently you could get them now, but at the time, very difficult to find. And my transmission guy told me four weeks and it took 14 months to get that back, but it's back and the Dope Fiend project has begun. <laughs> So the first order of business is to get this thing stripped down to just a tunnel. It's important that I get this tunnel sandblasted before I start because from this point on, it's gonna be nothing but new metal that's added to this project. So when I cut the pan in half, I can get all of the sand out because anyone who's had something sandblasted knows that stuff lingers. So we have the most chance of getting all of the sand out. When the pan's cut in half, we can blow some air through it. With this pan, we are going to be shortening it six inches and narrowing it six inches. I'm gonna quit filming because it's a lot of the same thing just on the other side. Next shot you'll see is probably loading it up, bringing it to the sandblaster. When it gets back from the sandblaster, this video, video will really begin. That's when we're gonna start cutting it up, shortening the frame, and doing what we gotta do to fit it under the body. Well, as you can see, we got most of this thing stripped down, and of course we find this. And although it can be fixed, and we do have to take out about six inches of this, um, I'm not really willing to start with something compromised. So I'm gonna get on Facebook, see what we could find. We'll start with something fresh. So this is where we're at. This baby's going to the scrap pile. I searched Facebook all night, found something, but it's about four and a half hours away and I'm not willing to do all that. So it's on to plan B which is this thing. I don't know if I've showed this on the channel. This is a 63 that we picked up probably about a year and a half ago. It's got a cool little patina to it, but someone parted out the doors before we got it, started cutting out the A pillars. So I'm gonna pull this body off and we're gonna use this pen. So let's get a tow bar hooked up to it and get it pulled around. As you can see, plan B is in full effect. Um, contrary to popular opinion, that's fine. All those parts are gonna be used to help other cars. We got the frame up. I started taping off the cut. So you can see we're gonna take three inches out here, three inches out here, and then we're gonna section the frame here, which is six inches total. We're gonna leave the bottom of the tunnel to here then we're gonna cut the bottom of the tunnel out here to this line, and this is just gonna slide over. Sounds good, so let's try to execute. All right, the main cuts for the section are done now. So what I have to do next, if I can get this tape off, is 
drill out the spot welds here, then I can pull this section out. Then this is gonna get a full cut through the bottom of the tunnel. And then this here is gonna get cut just the bottom of the tunnel. I'm gonna remove this section of the bottom of the tunnel. And then this whole part is just gonna slide over, tack it up. <laughs> So we have the section cut out and the pan is up on jack stands. The next part we have to do is we have to cut the bottom of the tunnel along this line and this line here, which is why it's jacked up so we could get under here. And then if all works correctly, this sh should slide into place. We'll tack weld it and uh, we'll move on to the rear section. All right, as you can see in the time lapse, we cut the bottom of the tunnel out. So everything's ready to get pushed together. All the welds are broken for the throttle and clutch tubes. We cut back the e-brake tubes. So now we have to put a tack on here. When we push it together, if you can see that bracket right here, it's gonna push right into there and then we'll have to somehow tack it. So it's pushed back together. As you can see, we still got a little gap. This is what I'm looking at because I know that this is the six inches out of it we need. And if you look at this, it's the same as this gap. Same on the other side, this gap and this gap. So we need to bring those together more and that'll give us the measurement. So what I'm doing is just trimming these lines to bring it in. I ran a new fuel line through there while it was open. I tried to blow out the other one, but it was all plugged up. So I'm gonna head in for the night. I'm pretty happy with where we're at right now. I still have a little more cutting and grinding to get it all to fit perfectly or as perfectly as I'm gonna make it fit, but it's not bad. It's very close. All right, we are back getting kind of a late start tonight. So, like I said last night, we're just gonna start trimming and bringing that two, the two halves in as close as possible. We got probably a quarter of an inch to go before perfect. All right, so we got it all fitting good. I got a little bit of a gap here, but I'm also gonna put a fish plate here when we're all done I'll, along with the bottom of the tunnel. I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking. I pulled four diagonal measurements from the front to the rear. Everything's lining up. I compared a measurement to Paul's pan and uh, we're six inches shorter, which is exactly where we need to be. So I'm gonna pick this back up tomorrow. We'll tack this all into place and then we'll start cutting for the narrowing of the torsion housing. All right, as you can see by that last clip, I sold my beetle. So I did a little crying while I was crying. I tacked together the Renault pan. Um, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and full weld this, full weld it out before we get to cutting the rear torsion bars. I'm gonna set you up on a time lapse and we'll go from there. the top of the tunnel welded this side I decided to just keep it moving the other side I kind of just did like a bunch of little tacks I think keeping it moving worked a little better I mean this is just it's fine but it's a little goober but I'm not a professional so what do you do when you're not a professional you weld car frames together and then 
drive the car. Um, I'm gonna flip this frame over and see what the bottom's looking like. I haven't even seen it yet. Um, I believe there's gonna be a gap, so there might be some filler needed. But like I said before, we're gonna do fish plates here and on the seam underneath the tunnel. Um, so let's get it flipped over. It's starting to look like a shortened pan. We got nice penetration all through here. I peeked inside the tunnel. We got good welds throughout, so I'm real happy with the way that this is going. I'm gonna go edit the video on this guy here that you would probably have seen two weeks ago. If you haven't seen it, check it out. There'll be a link up here or here, wherever it is. But we'll catch you tomorrow. We're back. The plan for today is to get this pan buttoned up, get it ready to be put into POR. So we're gonna start with shortening the housings. Obviously you could see they're marked. It's three inches out on each side. Uh, then we just have a bunch of little stuff to do. So we just gotta trim these down, tack them into place. Um, I'm gonna have to open a little window here to tack in the e-brake tubes into place. Obviously we're gonna get shift bushing in, get this window closed up and shorten the shifting rod and uh, that'll do it. So let's get started. <laughs> Both sides are cut. <clears throat> this one I drilled holes in for the plug welds. This is the sleeve that I have. So basically we're gonna slip this in. We're gonna slip the shock tower over it. Take our measurement, make sure we're three inches shorter. Plug weld all the holes and then we'll put a bead on the seam. the top side all welded up plug welds we did a bead here i still have to flip it over to get the bottom side but i'll do that once i get the other side going so i don't have to flip it twice so i'm going to get all that done and then we'll bring it back and start on the neck Portion housings are full welded all the way around. So I'm gonna put it back down. I'm gonna take a lunch break, go look for um, some POR 15, see if I can get it locally so I don't have to wait for it. If so, when I get back, we will open the window, weld, the e-brake tubes that are right in here, I just have to weld them to the bracket, so I'm just gonna open a window here. I will put the shift coupler in and then weld this shut, and then we have to shorten and clean up this shift rod six inches. And then the pan's ready to be assembled, so we'll get some POR 15 on it and uh, let it sit, and uh, tomorrow we'll assemble it. day i just got back as you saw in the last clip from my buddy john's house where he milled down these brake drums for me so they'll fit on the short spline axles um go check his channel out it's frog pit fabrication he's building some cool stuff over there he's currently building a beetle on a porsche boxer chassis with a subaru motor which is very very cool um 
get over in his comments, leave him a, a subscribe if you will. Uh, tell him to post some more videos because he's doing some cool stuff over there. Um, but we're back in here. Last night I left off with just starting this stupid little template to fill this window when I realized that it'd probably be best to put the shift rod in before I cover the window up just to make it a little easier. So I started over here. I grinded the end off. So we're gonna shorten it six inches, weld this back on, and we should be able to install it. Then we'll get that window shut. We'll tack the back little tubes and uh, we'll be ripping and roaring. The shortened shift rods in place. See back here. So we're all lined up now. Last thing we need to do is cut this window in, which you saw that I took. Get the grease out of here. I made that little template. I cut it out, traced it onto an old piece of the pan. So I'm just going to cut this little square out, and we'll get it mocked up. Got it all welded up, grinded down. We still need to tack the clutch and accelerator tubes into place and trim those to, to size. And put our three fish plates in. So I'm just gonna cut a square here, cut a square here, cut a square on the bottom. I'm gonna get all that done off camera. Um, next thing you guys will be seeing is we're gonna treat the metal, degrease it, and then POR 15 it. And we're back. Um, I moved the, the pan to some horses, put a fish plate up here and just ground down the weld. So if we do decide to put carpet on, um, it just sits a little better. Don't really need to do it. It's not perfect, I'm not perfect, so it's fun. But we're gonna degrease the whole chassis now and then uh, we're gonna metal prep it and then start applying some paint. Set up a time lapse as per the use. All right, we got the metal prep on there. You can see it kind of doing its thing. I'm going to let this dry. It's got about another 10 minutes and then uh, we'll start applying the POR 15. about halfway done it's coming out pretty good uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this finished and then leave it till tomorrow flip the pan over and then do the bottom tomorrow All right, this is what one can got us if anyone's wondering how far this will go. The whole top of a beetle pen shortened six inches, narrowed six inches. Um, I even did a little bit of the bottom and the only, I ran out just for this little section here. So tomorrow we'll come back once this is all dry and we'll flip the pan over and uh, we'll get the bottom done. All right, I went ahead and just finished the bottom off I don't know how much you guys actually want to see of me painting this thing with a brush so i went ahead and did it without you um as you can see i got the transmission this thing's ready to be bolted up freshly rebuilt i got the beam which was also freshly rebuilt this is an air beam disc brakes i made a video probably about a year ago now building that thing so we're finally getting to use it. So I think that's gonna be it for this video. We're going to, next week's episode, we're going to get the transmission in. We're going to get the spring plates on, get the beam bolted up, get it sitting on the ground with some wheels. 
Um, I still have to test fit the wheels I have for it. You may have seen them in the background of the video. Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna fit. I do have another option, which would be those guys right there, but that's gonna cost serious money to get those going. So if I could use the other wheels, great. If not, I'm gonna eventually build those wheels anyway. So, you know, it might just give me an excuse to spend the money. But I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys are enjoying watching this kind of weird build come together. And uh, if you are, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and tune in next week because we're going to keep moving every single week. Thanks. Mm -hmm.